Hello everyone, welcome to Hackstack Tutorials Reusable Components series. In this session, we will first recap what we learned in the previous session, since it's very important. And then we will talk about React Bootstrap Date Picker and how we can integrate it with React Hook Form. So let's... Okay, in previous tutorial, we talked about how to add a form that uh, is binded with uh, React Hook Form. Uh, and we talked about specifically about text uh, fields, like something like this. In this tutorial, we'll talk about a date picker and how we can combine React Bootstrap uh, with a kind of date picker that you can see on the screen and user can select a date. They can go through the year and month and pick up a date. And then at the end, these two form elements are binded and when they uh, submit, it adds it to the console and you can maybe send it to your server or whatever you want to do. And if any of these fields are empty, it will give error. It basically validates. Uh, maybe if the date is wrong, it also validates it and gives some error at the bottom that this date is requires some day or something so you can modify the error message as well so let's learn how to do that okay we need to add this date field into our form the previous form that we created in the previous session uh, in order to see it on the screen if i go back to the source code this is the field that i had and this is the custom floating input field that I created and I explained in the previous tutorial. So if I zoom in, you'll see that it looks like this. But now I added uh, this new one. And the only difference, it's exactly identical, uh, except two things. First one is basically the type. As you can see, this one has a type, but this one doesn't have. And the reason that this one doesn't have is that if I explained it in the previous tutorial, we check the type. If we pass the type to the component, we use the type. Otherwise, we use the text. So by default, this component uh, is a text. But if you want to have a date type, we need to pass type into our component. So this way it will show the date picker. And of course the label is different from previous one. And in this one, uh, we don't have any max character length requirement. We just have uh, uh, the required. So this field is required only. And that's the only validation that we want to enforce on this field. So this is the only thing that I added to the previous form that we had. And also, if you remember that uh, in our component, uh, HOC, it required two ob objects. The first one is the component itself, and the second one is elements. And in elements, it requires the name, initial value, and if it's required or not. So I, I added this one as well. And that's how it is showing two fields here. One more thing that I added to our component is the title. And as you can see here, it shows my profile title. I added some style into it, uh, nothing special. It's just a div uh, with h3 tag. And I wrapped it with, um, with this div and I applied some styling so you can see a better view of this. Okay, since this tutorial is highly dependent on the previous tutorial, I'll do the recap quickly uh, in one or two minutes to go over the code and then we'll start the implementation of the new code that we'll add. We talked about uh, the profile page that we have a component, a page on our application that is very simple. Uh, it basically has a component inside of it. There is one simple component inside and there are some headers that it's very simple as well. But this component includes uh, some form. So let's go to this form and this form, uh, if I close this, you'll see in previous tutorial, it had only one field, which was uh, input field for name. 
and then uh, in this tutorial we are adding this one we'll talk about it later but uh, this component is also a custom component floating input field we talked about this component as well uh, it has some properties that if you pass these properties it will use it in a different places and we went through the details of all of the uh, properties of these components one of the things that i think missed it was the step component step property and it's for the time that the type of the component or input field is number and if you want to give it a step uh, it will increment the number of the field uh, by whatever uh, number that you pass into it for example if the type of the com uh, input field is number and uh, you pass the step to one every time you uh, hit the stepper uh, it will go one by one it go to the two and three and four and whatever uh, and if if you pass the stepper two it will go increment by two so it will be two four six and so on and so forth that's the only props i think i missed in the previous tutorial and that's all so then we have a high order component which is called with form uh, Basically, it's doing most of the work for us for all of the forms that we add to our application. Currently, we have only one form, which is personal info form, but we can add uh, another form and use this component, higher order component, which is called with form. And it gets two arguments, the component itself and the number of elements. And not the only number of elements, but uh, the elements that you can see here. It has some property for each element. if uh what is the initial value if it's required and what's the first time and last and uh, what's the name of the input and inside of this uh hoc we basically wrap our uh, component uh, with form as you can see and these are bootstrap form and we have some props that we described in the previous tutorial and we have submit button that it will submit the form when they click submit and here this is the submit function uh, it basically calls the callback function that we have and that's all so if you want uh, more details about this hoc you can go back to the previous tutorial